So the first uh, little piece of reality is that I've never actually given a presentation before. <laughs> it's true. I'm really, really good at talking to cameras and terrified of talking to actual humans. So we'll just see how this goes. Um, but no, I'm actually, um, I'm really excited to be here. I've actually been a fan of Creative Mornings for years. Um, and part of it is because I do know John and so I kind of knew what he was doing and I thought, oh, this is just all the people that they seem to get and the people that come are like creative types that I actually look up to. So this is a huge honor and I've never been to this uh, showroom before. It's beautiful. It's all stuff that I wish I could afford, uh, but I'm a journalist, so I can't. Um, but uh, as John mentioned, uh, we worked together many, many years ago. It was actually my first job out of college. So I was a, a very young producer. Um, who didn't really know a whole lot about anything, but John and I were buddies, and I have a funny memory of, this is how long ago this was. He, uh, he and I were friends, and we used to talk about music and stuff, and he had better music taste than I did. And he once gave me like a mixtape on cassette. And it was like, huh, and I had one Walkman, so that's the only way I listened to it, because <laughs> cars didn't really have tape decks anymore. Anyway, so uh, thank you, John, very much for having me here, and thanks to everybody for coming and listening to my story. Um, they told me that uh, the theme was reality, which seems like, okay, that's like air. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Everybody knows that, but it was a little bit challenging to figure out how I would blend sort of my reality and my experiences with sort of the reality of the tech industry, which I've been covering for almost 20 years. Um, but there are a lot of parallels, so I'll do my best here um, and try to use Keynote at the same time. Um, I'm a journalist. I have a broadcasting degree. I went to San Francisco State, um, which is a big broadcasting school. Um, I graduated in 1998 um, with a new media focus, um, which is funny because nobody really says new media anymore, but that was the buzzword back then. It was like when you were broadcasting online, sort of, even though there wasn't a whole lot of online video yet. Um, so we were all kind of trying to figure that out. Um, I don't write code. I'm certainly not a designer. I've, I've never really worked in any sort of like a technical field. But through circumstance, I've always worked in technology, specifically technology journalism. So I will show you the super cool first, whoops, did I go the wrong way? Yes, there we are, New Media News. Look at that website. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, what, what a treat. I had to go to the Wayback Machine to find this. It's amazing what you can find. I mean, I really went down a black hole, and, and this presentation will probably suffer because I did a lot of that last night. Anyway, this was part of a local news station in San Francisco, KRON TV. At the time, it was an NBC affiliate, so we were very cool. It no longer is. Um, and I was on a show covering Silicon Valley. It was called New Media News. And we covered things like new startups. Uh, there was a particular uh, shoot that I went on at one point. You know, again, I'm, I'm young, I'm 21 or so, right out of college, so I'm, I'm pretty naive. And I don't really know what a tech bubble is. But uh, we went on a shoot and it was a company called, and I hope if anyone's here, you're all lovely people, it was called theman.com. And the whole idea was that they were so gung-ho about the future and their cool product and they were gonna you know, build websites for men or something like that. And the founders got tattoos of the logos on their ankles and we shot it and made a segment out of it and well, you know how that story ends. Um, so, and that's actually not the first uh, instance I've heard of that happening, so, you know. Anyway, it was a, it was a very uh, sort of bunch of high rollers getting a bunch of venture capital money. Um, and it was, it was weird. It was a weird thing. I mean, I grew up in the Bay Area, but I grew up on the other side of San Francisco, a small town called Sebastopol. And so Silicon Valley was like, you know, office parks and people building sound cards and yeah, you know, it's like it all was a little bit weird to me. I didn't really understand that, uh, you know, there was, there was sort of a bubble. I didn't really understand that that was happening, but I knew something didn't seem right. And then, 
there was this website. Can I say it out loud? Anyway, you see it, you see it. Um, and this was actually reality. You know, all of us behind the scenes, you know, when your boss isn't looking, we're just reading fucked company because this was actually the truth of what was going on. It's like, wow, this, I think the one that, iVillage is laying off people. Palm Pilot isn't doing so well. Uh, Excite is going under, you know, all this stuff where it was like, this was actually what was really happening behind the scenes. And here I am doing these sort of fluff pieces about startups and how great everything is going. Well, um, needless to say, there was sort of an implosion. That's around, this is about 2000 or, or so. Um, luckily, I was working in journalism, so even if the story is bad, you still have a job. You just tell a lot of bad stories. <laughs> so I moved on to tech TV. Again, this is, you know, the, a way back machine. It's amazing what you can find about yourself on the internet. So I ended up working <laughs> At a company called Tech TV is no longer in existence. It was a 24-hour cable news network that was all about technology. And it was great because I liked the stuff anyway. It wasn't really about the startup scene so much. It was very hands-on. I mean, we would teach people, you know, how to fix their own motherboards or, you know, how to, you know, hack windows or, you know, what's the best digital camera to buy? You know, and like they topped out at eight megapixels or something. <laughs> and it was great because I, you know, I kind of, you know, in, that, in those days, and there's still some of that going on, but in those days, it was really a boys club more than it is now. And I always liked being around guys and, you know, kind of uh, having people respect me and, and feeling like I could, you know, talk the talk. And, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but it was also really nerve wracking. I, I didn't know how to be on camera, um, kind of how I feel right now. But, uh, yeah. but, but, uh, but I learned a lot um, and I actually got really good at it. So that was where I sort of changed my reality from somebody who could be behind the scenes and tell stories and kind of pump other people up to somebody who could be myself as, as good as possible, kind of a heightened version of yourself um, and tell people um, you know, cool stuff. Tell them how to fix something. Tell them, you know, what uh, cool website they should know about. That sort of thing. Um, talk about the news. It was it was a really, really, really fun job, and it completely changed my whole career trajectory. You know, at one point I thought I wanted to work for MTV and edit music videos because I grew up watching them, and that seemed like a great job. And then I had to work in the industry long enough to realize I'm not an editor. I just want to hang out with editors and talk to them because they're really cool, but that wasn't really for me, and I didn't know that until I had worked in the industry for a while. Um, so, this changed my life, movable type. Now, of course, this is not what movable type looked like when it first launched, but it was the blog engine that I used for my first blog. One of the things at Tech TV that we were always trying to figure out is like, what's the next big thing, right? And this is, you know, again, over, over, you know, this is more like 15 years ago, so blogging, or weblogs at the time, as they were called, was like this, okay, so everybody has a publishing platform and everybody can talk about themselves and where's this all going? What's it, you know, everyone has this grandstand and you know, people were writing really long blogs, myself included. But I was, I was really fascinated with it because it was sort of like, you, you, you kind of had this wave of people who really wanted to talk about their own realities and they never really had a platform to before. And some of it, you know, you, you, everyone has read a blog and went like, oh God, why would you share all that? So much oversharing. But it was like, but it was like, it, it, was, it was very therapeutic and cathartic for, for a lot of folks. And I, I would, I was gonna put up one of my old blog posts, but they're just so horrifying. I didn't wanna do that to you guys. <laughs> but you know, it's like, you just get obsessed with it. Um, and that was a real obsession of mine. Anyway, Tech TV um, came and went as a cable network, um, a company bought another company, and then I ended up moving to Los Angeles in 2004 um, and working for a cable network called G4. And G4 was uh, awesome in many ways. Um, LA, a real company town. I actually took that, took that picture like yesterday, but <laughs> pretend this was 2004. It looked the same back then. Um, and it was kind of like, this was very exciting for me because I was like a TV star, but like a D-list TV star. And so like now I'm in LA and I'm hosting this, this new show. There we go. Yeah, so I'm just, we don't want to listen to the, to the audio, but you'll see me in a second. And you know, this was, it was, it was very exciting for me because 
I thought, you know, LA is the big time, right? I mean, what's bigger than LA in, in broadcasting, but like maybe New York. So I was doing my thing, wearing that scarf. <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I have no recollection of this. But, you know, there I was, do, you know, we're talking about Xbox 360, this is great, right? Dream job, dream job. Um, or you would think, LA, though, was not sort of the hotbed of internet culture and startups and people doing stuff outside of the box that it is today at all. Um, it was, it was kind of old school television still. And, you know, this is a person that I don't even, I don't even know who that is. I don't know what I was talking about. Somebody else did my hair. There's probably extensions in there. You know, it's like, it was just, um, for some reason, and you know, maybe it's because I didn't know how good I had it, I wasn't really digging it because I didn't really know where I was gonna go next. Um, and that, like, it really ate away at me because you, know, you always, especially when you're still young, you know, this is like, I don't know, I'm not even 30 years old yet. You're kind of like, all right, well, what's, you know, how do I get more money? You know, what's my next, what's my next position? You know, whose boss am I going to be? You know, I had never been anybody's boss at this point and I didn't know what to grow into. So my perceived reality looked really great. Um, but my actual reality felt a little lackluster. And I think a lot of people have that sort of like that big epiphany, right? Where somewhere in your career, you know, you're younger, you're older, you're, you're, you're midway, you kind of think, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I want to do this. Um, you know, as good as it might be, you just don't quite feel like it's the right path. Um, and that's really scary because, you know, to walk away from something that, you know, is your livelihood and gets you a paycheck and, and pays your rent is, is, is really scary. But I did. Um, I didn't really know what was next, but um, I took some time off and just kind of just kind of marinated on, on the future. So the future was internet television. And these are just a few logos of companies that I worked for. Revision 3, um, eventually bought by Discovery Networks, but I worked there at the very beginning. So it was definitely a startup with like five of us sitting on the floor. Uh, Current TV, um, I had a stint there. Twit TV, I worked at for like five years, uh, the longest by far, the longest job I've ever had. Um, and then most recently TechCrunch, which I just left in March, um, which was, um, I mean, I can't say enough good things about TechCrunch, um, but I'll you know, get to why I left that um, in a minute. Um, the internet video revolution was really, really exciting to me because like I said, in LA I felt like, gosh, you know, what's, how, do I, how do I take the next step in my career? I'm, I'm a little lost. And that's because the traditional sort of broadcasting avenues for me felt really limited. And internet video was like just breaking that all down and starting over. Um, Revision 3 was, um, again, like I said, we were just a few people making some kind of crappy video, honestly, but it was, you were able to put it up online, you know, now you have buzzwords like streaming and, and, and bandwidth and, and people are interested in it and, you know, YouTube is like a real thing and it's not just cat videos and people falling over and it really was at the beginning. You know, I mean, if you look at some of the, like, the old archived YouTube pages, they've got featured videos on the front page and it's like 150 views, 85 views, 300 views. You know, it's like it was a really it was a really different situation back then. But um, but it was exciting. It was really exciting to me. Um, and I've always felt like, you know, I don't know how to do anything except kind of be myself and try to be good at that and be interesting. But um, this kind of like you know, less is more, less, less of the kind of glitzy, uh, glamour type of uh, television that never really appealed to me. I never really did very well at it. So internet video in San Francisco, all of these companies were based in San Francisco, or I was anyway. Um, I did a lot of that. That's probably an eight year span now. Um, it was a really crucial few years, not just because of internet video that obviously I had a personal interest in, but um, you know, blogging dropped off a lot. Not that there aren't a lot of bloggers today, but there are, you know, so many fewer bloggers than there were back then. And it's not just because only a few people could make money doing it. I was not one of them. Um, I did try that. Blog her. Did anybody used to run blog her ads on their blog? Well, I did. And I made like $200 in my best month. Um, so I was like, okay, well, that's not a viable option. Um, but it was also just, it was just a lot for, for readers to consume. 
you know, even if you like understand RSS feeds, which really the general public never did, but even if you do and you've kind of got the whole thing organized, it's just sort of a lot. Um, and it was sort of like, okay, well, you know, where's the communication going exactly? This is, this is all great, but you still get like a few superstars and then, you know, where's the rest of everybody's story? You know, where, does, where, do, where do they get lost? Um, and really, it got replaced with little short bursts of communication. You know, short tweets, um, short texts. I would say short Facebook posts, but nobody from my high school knows how to do that. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, <laughs> sorry. I'm just jealous. <laughs> Hopefully they're not here or watching. <laughs> they don't know how to use the internet. Um, but uh, but 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 that that became really fascinating too because you know, somehow constraining people into just shorter ways of expressing themselves was like the coolest thing. <laughs> this is this is an SMS reply I send constantly, and it doesn't mean anything, but somehow it works. It's like it's the best gift I've seen to date. <laughs> And you can watch it all day. <laughs> Maybe we will. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but real communication um, has, has really changed. And that's, that's really exciting to me. Um, and it's exciting because, again, this whole time, I've kind of been the person who's talking about the people making technology. So um, as that technology changes, um, it's, 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 just been, it's just been a lot of fun for me to watch. But, um, but it's, not, it's not all fun. Um, the current tech scene, which is, can I actually pause this? Is it like really distracting? <laughs> <laughs> I can just see it out of the corner of my eye, the smoke cat. Um, we'll just go to the next one. All right, so this, th this is, and I, and I hate to throw anybody under the bus, but I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the sort of the scene in uh, technology, and, and, and it is San Francisco-centric, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, that whole thing. It's not just there, but it's very, very pervasive there, and it also is um, an area of California that I just left and I have been in a long time. So this is an example of a company, um, Rentberry. Um, this is just a, a, a company that's been around and they, they have a new model where they want to let uh, landlords, let renters bid on an apartment with the highest bidder winning the apartment, right? This is exactly the San Francisco problem because, you know, we already, like, nobody can buy a house except all the rich people who got some, you know, Facebook shares, right? But, like, don't do this to the renters. There's no housing up there as it is. Um, any of you who have lived up there or know people up there or just, you know, read, know that there's, there's a real situation going on in San Francisco with housing. Um, it's very impacted. It's a mess. Um, and this is you know, the sort of situation where you kind of go like, what are we doing? You know, what, we're, we're coming up with solutions that like, okay, technically you can build a product where this will work and somebody will have a bid and it will get accepted and there'll be a transaction and oh, look, that worked. But is that really good for everybody? And you know, I hate to use the word, how does it scale? But it's like, how does it scale? I mean, it, it scales in you know, a place like San Francisco, sure, but this is not really like a solution for humans. Um, and, and really, you know, to, to take another step, it, even if it is, it shouldn't be. You know, this is, it's, you know, we're crazy. So technology sometimes made me feel a little bit like, you know, too many people in one place talking about the same thing and trying to figure out solutions that were not necessarily kind of human-based, uh, felt like you know, the opposite of reality. It's like we're, we're sort of changing behavior, um, not necessarily for the better. Um, and when you report on technology companies um, for as many years as I have, you, know, you end up with your favorites. You like a founder a lot. You know, maybe they're your buddy. You know, they slip you some you know, little juicy bits that you can, you can say, you know, anonymous source, that sort of thing in you know, one of your videos or your posts. Or maybe you like the company's app design or or, or whatever, um, but the reality is is that most of those companies are just failing, um, and it doesn't mean that they don't have good ideas. Did anybody use RDO before RDO shut down recently? Yeah, a few of you? Well, RDO was, it's a streaming music service, it's like a Spotify, but just better. It was so much better. It was prettier, it worked better, and it didn't work out um, for reasons that have mostly to do with investor money. 
and not because uh, there weren't good people working there um, building good products. Um, the real uh, issue, I think, that that I found, um, and this is again, you know, I'm you know bystander really. I'm talking about these companies. I'm not really living it. Um, was that many companies just aren't? It doesn't matter if they're good because it's it, they're built to you know go public or be acquired. If you go public, well, there's one set of problems because then the public can get very angry with you if your user growth isn't big enough. Twitter, great example of this. Twitter is my favorite tool by a wide margin. I mean, I live on Twitter. I don't say anything of value, so know that. But I just, it's, they, those are my people. I, I, I love Twitter. Um, and I've, I've sort of curated my feed of other people on Twitter that, that I pay attention to, um, partly for news or you know, like basketball gossip or just weird stuff. It's just, it's a, it's a great place to be. And Twitter's having an issue right now um, for anybody who, you know, kind of follows that industry gossip because their user growth doesn't, um, doesn't uh, grow enough month to month or between their quarterly reports. So it's like, what will happen to Twitter? How can it change? Is it going to have to start monetizing? Just terrible stuff. And it's like, oh, God, you just should never have gone public. But they had to because they had to pay off their original investors. Um, when you get acquired, I mean, it's, it's a sob story all around. You, you know, Microsoft buys you or a big company buys you and, it, and then the first product just ceases to exist. Um, it, it's almost always the case. Um, very seldom you'll get a, a product that kind of runs in tandem with their, with their parent um, company. But usually it's they just want you know, two people on the team. So they, you know, they buy, they call it acquiring or they want technology um, because the bigger company just doesn't feel like building it from scratch because somebody else like got halfway there already. So it can be just sort of like, oh, man, you know, what are we all doing? It sucks. You know, there's all these cool people doing this cool stuff, but where does it go? It's like the same five companies kind of making all the same stuff now. Um, that's what it started to feel like to me. So, you know, needless to say, I was a little disillusioned. Um, there is definitely world-changing innovation. Um, and I don't want to make light of big companies that are doing big things, you know, self-driving cars, um, virtual reality, Google I.O. For anybody who follows the goings on of Google, it's their big developer conference that's happening right now, this week, up in Mountain View. Um, you know, they're all about VR right now. And I, you know, I, I would never dismiss that as not being something that is probably going to be world-changing for the better. You know, we're at the beginning of it now, and that is exciting. So it's not all fluff up there, but um, you know, being from the Bay Area and watching it change, I, um, I don't know, I kind of had to get out of there. So anyway, I was working at TechCrunch, great job. Um, in fact, they all kind of looked at me like, why, why would you leave? This is your best job. And, <laughs> yeah. hmm. and um, I, I, having lived in LA for a few years, way back when, about a decade ago, um, I, I enjoyed it, and um, I think that anybody who has come here from a smaller town or even a smaller city anywhere else, um, LA, um, and you could say that about New York or London or you know, Tokyo or whatever, you can get lost here. Um, I don't recognize one face in the audience, and that is such a good thing, because if I were doing this in San Francisco, I would know all of you. And that's just kind of the way it goes. After a while, you, you just... You just start seeing the same faces, which is a source of comfort, and I would be much less nervous right now. But um, it, it, you know, it's, it's for me personally. I felt like my reality was, um, it, it was like I got to get out of this. You know, we're all kind of talking about the same thing, and it felt like an echo chamber. And um, it's nice to to feel anonymous and like you're surrounded by people who are doing cool stuff that you don't know anything about. And um, so, when I was approached to, uh, to start a new, that's not me, but there's some people I hired, uh, to start a new SVOD, which is sub Subscription Video On Demand Network, um, through Lionsgate, which is uh, called Comic-Con HQ, or CCHQ as we like to call it, down in Los Angeles, um, I said, yeah, I really want to do that. And there were a few reasons for it. Um, first of all, I, I really wanted to get back to LA. Um, the weather, the people, it's awesome. I live at the beach, no complaints. The driving is awful. And there are a lot of potholes, and I don't know why, but we'll, we'll get through it.
but uh, I'm building something. This is, this is a beta product, um, so anybody who goes to ComicConHQ.com will see that we, there, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, um, it's a destination that has a combination of original series. Obviously, we're part of Lionsgate, so we have lots of uh, licensed content, so that's TV shows and movies, and it's all kind of crazy behind the scenes. But you know, I'm working on this product. Now, if I were in my previous job, I would just be talking about it. And I would be talking about you know, who's running the show, how much money do they have, um, is, you know, does this look OK when I you know, click through it for like five minutes before I you know, write it off as, as, as doomed or a failure or you know, that sort of thing. And that's what you get when you're talking about other people's companies. Um, and I've always wanted to. You know, I'm not a founder. I have no good ideas. I can't run anything. But I love the idea of being part of a team that really cares about you know, each little change that we might make. You know, is the yellow too yellow? Do we want to move this up you know, just a couple pixels, that sort of thing? Um, I never really did that before. I just was like criticizing other people's work. Um, and that's really great. It's a great change. Um, and um, the reality of being part of a team that wants everyone to like our product is really scary. It's so easy to say, well, this is what's wrong with what you're doing. I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work out. Or Microsoft will probably buy them if they're lucky. Is, is you know, I don't know how any of it's going to go. But there's a passion. You know, it sounds kind of trite. But there is a passion. Um, a bunch of us were sitting in a big conference room yesterday talking about what we like and what we don't like and changes we're going to make. And, and it's like, you kind of feel alive, like I'm doing something. And, and if it works out, I'm going to feel like Superman. And uh, that's, that's kind of my reality now. And I've only been doing it for a couple months. So you know, we'll see how it goes. But um, I don't have uh, you know, a, a, a super inspirational takeaway um, from this rambling talk of mine. But I think you know, if there's anything uh, you know, that, that's sort of the overarching theme of kind of my career blended with where I think the tech industry that I've followed so closely, um, you know, is going is, is there, there are just really no rules. Um, and I think that, you know, in your career and your trajectory and where you think you're going, um, you know, versus the real reality of where you might be going is, is always changeable. Um, you know, I, I used to be like a you know wannabe TV star, and I just was like, I don't like this. I want to do something else, and so I did. And you know, I, I've I've done a lot of things since then. You know, I've been laid off. I've laid off people. You know, it's it hasn't always been fun at all. But um, but you know, you you are in control of your own destiny. Um, and I eventually will be doing something new yet again, and and I think that's okay. And um, should I go back to the smoking cat gif? <laughs> I think that's a good way to end it. There we are. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>